Hello, welcome to Cycle One Science Experiments. We are beginning the study and Cycle One on biology. Biology is the study of living organisms and their vital processes. A more simple definition for our little kiddos um, is that biology is the study of life and living things. Um, so, a couple things each week you want to um, begin your science time with. One is the definition of biology. Two is the scientific method. The scientific method includes the purpose for why we're doing what we're doing, the, or which also is the question, if you have a question, purpose or question, some background research. You want to tell the kids a little bit about what's going on. And then hypothesis, they can make an educated guess based on that background research. Then you do your procedure, which is your experiment materials, um, man, analyze the results and then draw conclusions. So you have your purpose, research, hypothesis, procedure, analysis, and conclusion. Um, each week, repetition, part of that classical model, going over it will help the kids to begin to understand and learn the method that we approach science experiments with. Okay, so in the study of biology, um, study of living things, um, brought me definitely to Romans 1.20. I wanna read that to you. Many of you may know this already, but it says, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, being even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, meaning we are without excuse for acknowledging God's presence, God's creative hand in, um, in creation and in life. And so as we study biology, these seem like very simple experiments, but when you really look at them, they can create such wonder um, at how God thought of all things, thought initially and continues to think about all the little details that make life keep happening, make plants keep growing, um, the life cycle, like that how his hand is involved in all of that um, really is um, beyond just a simple explanation, except that there is an intelligent creative designer behind it all. So that is the heart of why we're doing these experiments. And you want to really pass that on to your kids. This is really cool. The little simple things we're doing and learning um, can create a bigger wonder of how God is at work in our world and in us. So today, the baby bean experiment. Um, the purpose of this experiment is to learn how a baby plant grows, um, some different parts of a baby bean plant and their purposes. So some background research, I would ask the kids, have you ever planted a garden? Do you know anything about how plants grow? What do they need to grow? Um, what is a seed? Does anybody know what a seed is? Um, and so get some background information, maybe talk to them a little bit. In the future, we will learn parts of a plant, which are leaves, stem, and roots. How are each of those parts important in how a plant grows? And then our, um, then you can, you know, from that hypothesize, um, will come kind of along as we go, the questions that you'll ask. Materials for our students, each student will get a little toothpick, which will basically be their pointer, a dry bean, pinto bean, and then a soaked pinto bean. Um, just for technical details, it is much more helpful to make sure these have soaked overnight. It will not work if they've only soaked a few hours. They really do have to soak a long time to be soft enough to open. So we are first of all gonna look at our dry bean. Get your pointers out and let's identify some parts. The outside is called the seed coat. Anybody have any ideas why it's called a seed coat? You're right, it's like a coat. It protects the seed or the baby plant that's inside. On top of that, or it's not on top of it, on the side of it, can't really see really well, but that white part there is called the hilum. And right on top of the hilum is a little dot called the micropile. That micropile is actually an opening to the inner seed or the inner bean 
uh, where water is absorbed, where the plant is pollinated and can begin the germination process or the growth process. So those are very important parts. So the seed coat protects it until it's ready to do its thing and become a new plant itself. Um, right above the hilum is the micropile, which is where again, water pollination happens to the inner plant and again, starts that process. So you wanna identify those parts and then you're gonna look at the soaked bean. First of all, what do you see is different about these beans? And can anyone tell me why they think the soaked one's bigger than the dry one? And of course it's soaked and through that little micro pile has sucked in water all night long um, and has caused it to swell and to soften it, soften that seed coat, which is what happens underground so that the new little plant inside can begin its growing process. It'll stay dormant until it's in the right environment um, with soil and water to begin its process. So you're gonna take your wet soaked bean. Um, I will give my kiddos um, two for each child, just in case the first opening doesn't work well. Um, sorry, my phone's doing something. And um, so you wanna go along the back edge of it with your nail or just with a little pressure and kind of just trace along the very edge and it pops straight in half. So then it looks like that. And then you wanna identify the parts on the inside of your plant. Um, first of all, you have your seed coat again, um, which you can analyze a little better now that it's off the bean. It's actually pretty thick material um, to help protect. You can also see a little bit better the hilum and the little brown dot is your micro pile again from that. So look at your seed coat. And then you're gonna look at inside your bean. Um, trying to see if you can see that very well or not. You have um, some main, the main parts of the plant. First of all, point to this big chunky area here, the main part of the bean on those sides. That's called the cotyledon. The cotyledon is basically the food that feeds this plant. Um, because as you may have discussed in the research part, you know, most plants grow through the sunlight causing photos, photosynthesis, um, sugars and carbohydrates to grow the plant. Well, when this bean is underground, it's not even getting sunlight yet. So how does it begin to grow? Well, God thought of that little detail and gave it this cotyledon, um, which is the food it needs to begin that growth process until the leaves have popped up and can begin photosynthesis. Pretty cool, right? So cotyledon here. And then the parts of the plant, which I had mentioned earlier, leaves, stem, and roots, are all seen in their embryonic, embryonic or baby plant phase here. You have, first of all, what you can see hanging out from the side here, it looks like a leaf. That is your epicotyl. Your epicotyl will turn into the leaves of the plant. Right behind that, so you have leaves. What do you have behind your leaves? You have the stem, same thing in the baby plant. You've got your epicotyl, which are the leaves. Then you have your hypocotyl, which is the stem. And you can't see it well here, but you can when you open it yourself. It's the other little raised area. So you've got your epicotyl, hypocotyl, and behind that, the last little thing that comes down like this is your radical. And that are, is what will become roots, radical roots. So you've got your epicotyl leaves, hypocotyl stem, and then your radical roots. And so all right here in this tiny little thing is a whole plant just in its baby form, um, waiting to just be in the right soil um, to do its um, adult growth process. And so you wanna identify those parts, talk about their purposes, um, create wonder and how cool it is that God created a bean to be a little seed. And this plant would then, this seed would then grow into a full bean plant have bean pods that then have these little beans in them. The pods fall off as they um, mature and then this bean or seed 
once it's pushed down into the ground through rain and through processes, um, would start all over again. And so God created this to grow um, on its own through just natural life and processes. Um, so the, the bean plant and other baby plants, much like many of us, especially in the low country, know about oak trees and acorns. Um, same thing. That's why acorns are, um, they're a seed. They're a baby tree within themselves. And so start the same process much like a bean does. If you have extra time, my tutors will have um, this reference sheet so you don't have to memorize all those parts. Um, the big kids can then identify, all the big kids will have these in your crates. Um, we'll identify the parts, they can just write them in. Or you could have your kids draw a picture of um, the baby bean plant too on their paper. And then again, identify the parts, talk about God's purposes behind this, much like he creates new life in us. Um, he creates new life even through plants and this baby bean. All right, have fun.